Next.js route handlers are great, but there are a bunch of mistakes that I see people making with them. In this video, I will share with you four mistakes you should avoid when using Next.js route handlers. And I have a surprise bonus for you at the end of the video that will help you level up your Next.js skills. So be sure to watch until the end. In smaller projects and when creating a proof of concept, it is okay to just place your route handlers inside API folder without any kind of structure. But when you work with a bigger project with more than five routes and a project that will be run in production, which means it needs to be well maintainable, it is crucial to add some structure for your routes. So instead of placing all your route handlers inside one folder, what we should do is rather place our routes inside logical folders and this way also segment the API a little bit. We can also use Next.js route groups which allow us to group folders and routes without affecting the actual routing of the application. We can create a route group by wrapping a folder's name in parentheses. This way when we look at our routes they are nicely organized but this won't affect the actual routing of the application. So let's say we want to make a route that gets the user's information. It feels tempting to name it as get user, for example, but this is not a good practice. It restricts the use of the route to only to the get method. What if we want to make a route for saving user information? Then we would need to make a new route called save user and we would end up with two files which both handle information about the user. So the problem here is that we are basically including the HTTP method to the route name. We don't have to do that. What we should do instead in this situation is to create one route and name it user and then inside of it we could define handlers for both get and post methods. So now when we want to get user information we would make a get request to the user endpoint and when we want to save user information we would make a post request to that same user endpoint. So the third mistake I see people making, well I'm just gonna say it right away, is not using dynamic routes. Dynamic routes don't just work inside normal pages but they also work with route handlers. So for example in our user route we could make it a bit better by adding the user ID to the route. So now whether it is a get or post request that we make the user ID will always be provided in the route itself. Whenever we are using server components it is almost always better to fetch and save the data inside the component instead of rendering the component and then triggering an API request to a route handler. So instead of using route handlers from server components, we should just do the work inside the server component itself if possible. Benefits of this include smaller bundle sizes, less boilerplate code, fewer network requests needed and we can utilize the server component cache. That being said, there are still situations where we can't do all the work in the server component and we need to use a route handler. But we should always think if it's necessary to use a route handler with server components or could we do the same thing inside the server component itself. At the beginning of the video I mentioned a bonus surprise. Well, as we know programming is not so much of remembering things than it is finding the correct information and implementing it. With route handlers I found myself looking up the same things over and over again, always googling the same things in the documentation. And this was frustrating and also time consuming. To solve this I created an easy to refer Next.js route handlers cheat sheet that I now use every day and it saves me a ton of time. If that is something you also want you can now download it from the link in the description. 